Hey guys, Lewis here with premiumbeat.com and today we're going to have a look at the basics of the colour wheels. So if you're brand new to editing or filmmaking in general and you want to give your footage a little bit more finesse, uh, you're not too sure what to do, but you've jumped into editing software and you've seen these uh, colour correction wheels and you're not entirely too sure as to how they work, uh, well this video is for you so we're gonna jump straight into it here in resolve this is a typical representation of the color wheels four identical looking wheels although we will be focusing on the three to the left that also operate identically however the adjustments will vary with each wheel as each wheel represents a different tonal range what are the ranges they are separated as lift gamma gain which primarily corresponds to the shadows midtones and highlights but not precisely. Let's bring up the scopes to see what these wheels are doing exactly. Uh, sometimes on an image it can be difficult to properly identify, but I think perhaps the best way to demonstrate on how these regions operate is with the master wheel underneath it. These allow you to adjust the Y RGB channels together, which in order will adjust the luminance for the tonal regions depending on what control you use. Dragging a master wheel to the left makes the tonal region darker and dragging it to the right makes that tonal region lighter. So you can make quick contrast adjustments that are more precise than simply increasing the contrast setting found beneath. In the scopes, when I move the lift, uh, while yes, it is affecting all properties of the image as it's squeezing the contrast, it's being pushed from the bottom of the selected tonal region. So let's have a look at this in practice with color. So at the center of these wheels is the white point and at the edges, you'll find the primary hues and everything in between. If I push towards a red hue in the gamma wheel, we'll see that correlate in the scopes as the red channel pushes from the shadows with a heavier presence leading in to the midtones region. Or perhaps if I push towards the blue in the gain wheel, we can start to see the blue extend high into the highlight region in both scopes and of course in the image. But what's the difference when adding a hue to a select region? Because it feels like when you add a bit of color to a region, it affects the entire image. Now, there is something important to note regarding the regional differences between lift, gamma, and gain. As the lift corresponds with the shadows, you may think that these controls definitively define one specific region. Perhaps on a graph, you would assume it would look something like this. However, this isn't the case. The regions overlap quite broadly too. Visually, it would look something like this. We can see that there's not a definitive gap between the lift and the gamma or the gamma and the gain. Everything intersects, meaning your adjustments smoothly transition into the corresponding internal region. As such, you can make subtle and naturalistic adjustments using these controls. So if I would add, say, 0.10 to the red channel, uh, to each color wheel, then compare, we might get a better idea as to how the hues work in each region. So in the lift slot, we can see that the red has primarily affected the darker parts of the image, leaving the sky in its natural color because that area has the brightest luminance values and the lift wheel doesn't correlate to that. The gamma adjustment has left the dark shadows in the bright highlights somewhat neutral, but has given the image an overall red cast because the image has been exposed properly with a wide range of information in the midtones. Whereas the gain adjustment has completely affected the sky and the bright areas on the ground, but has left the shadows with a somewhat neutral color. So yeah, while the hue will somewhat affect the overlapping region, where you input that hue, or where you move that uh, color balance wheel will dictate how the image is affected. So let's put this information to use uh, with a theoretical job where the filmmaker has said, uh, can we warm the shot and make sure that we have maximum contrast. For this, I'm gonna lower the lift until the shadows look quite natural. Uh, I'm gonna push up the gain quite a bit so we got that nice daytime brightness shining through the clouds. And then lower the gamma until these, uh, these darkened areas start to look quite organic. Okay, so now we have an image with maximized luma values. So I would typically adjust the hue on the same node for these control wheels, but I'm gonna create a new node in this specific circumstance because I'll be turning uh, the hue node on and off quite often, but I wanna keep that contrast locked in on the image. So now we need to warm the image. So this shot is a midday shot, uh, but the filmmakers want to emulate that it's later into the day. And with a warmer light, uh, we can imitate that. The majority of the color information is in the midtones. We can see that in the scopes too. And we know that the gamma has the most overlapping area for the tonal regions. So let's add some warmth to the gamma wheel. And I'm simply gonna do that by pushing the center point towards the reddish area 
of the hue. And you will find that you only ever need to push the control point of the color wheel slightly outward from the center. And that's because the further that you push the control point, the more saturation you're adding to the adjustment. And unless you're looking for an extremely creative look, a lot of the time you never need to go right to the very edge. Now, the problem is with this initial addition of the warm is that we've got these dark warm areas and typically shadows aren't going to be warm uh, in color. And I implore you to learn a little bit about color theory because it helps a lot when grading an image. So to fix the issue of warm shadows, uh, which is also a fantastic song by the band Fink, <laughs> we're going to go to the lift wheel and we're going to add blue to the shadow to counter the addition of that red hue, which is slipped into the upper area of the shadow regions. There we go. So we have a warmer image with the corrected shadows. Okay, depending on what software you're using, you may also see an additional color wheel called the offset color wheel. This operates exactly like the lift, gamma and gain controls. However, the results are very different as it allows you to ingest the entire tonal region of the YRGB channels. So the color balance controls will simultaneously adjust all hue values across the three tonal regions, which may work in your favor if you need to add a slight color cast to the entire image. And likewise, the master wheel underneath will adjust the lightness of the entire image. You need to raise the luma values of the whole image and not just the midtones. You want to use the offset master wheel. Okay, so this has been Lewis with Premium B. I hope if you are brand new to filmmaking and editing, this episode has uh, shone a light onto the color wheels because they can be confusing at the best of times. But with that, I will catch you guys next time.